I think we can spend a few minutes on the discussion here if anybody has questions. He, uh, Dr. Leiter wrote a really nice editorial on a paper in critical care medicine in 2010. I think the paper was by Terzi, and um, he wrote the editorial for that paper, and he, it's really nicely uh, describes basically this lecture in his editorial, so I highly recommend it. So it's 2010, Critical Care Medicine, it's volume 38, I think. Leo? Okay, Leo Huis from Nijmegen. Uh, I have a question. The uh, a lot of the studies about the hearing broyer reflex, at least the early ones, have been performed in healthy subjects. But how is atelectasis? I mean, our patients with ARDS, how does that affect the hearing broyer reflex? Right. So one of the hearing broyer reflexes that he did not discuss, which I was going to discuss in my lecture, is the deflation-sensitive reflex. So if you have uh, a derecruitment of the lung, you have as well those receptors. They may not be the same one as the stretch receptors, but they detect a re reduced compliance or a uh, decrease in FRC. And what they do is they feed back to the brain to open up the lung. Then at the same time, if I have an inspiration, at the same time there's a negative feedback and a positive feedback to the respiratory centers right. because so, there might be hyperinflation in one part of the lung and collapse in another part. <laughs> right, so you'll get the mixed messages. And Chris is going to talk a lot about um, the different feedback mechanisms and the competition between the two of them. I'll wait for my... So what, uh, what do you see on the diaphragm activity when that happens? You see an increase in the baseline, the tonic activity because of the de-recruitment and maybe a lower... Yeah, know. we see an increase in baseline activity of yeah. your EDI minus signal uh, when there is de-recruitment, but sometimes it's really hard to get it down. I mean, you can give as much beep as you, as you want, but sometimes you don't see a reduction in EDI minus activity. So, I think, yeah, well, I agree. I think that's very complex in a non heterogeneous lung. Well, the, the, the problematic part, I think, is not only so much the atelectasis, I think it's also the liquid. So, edema in itself is a, the, the sensation of drowning, and it doesn't matter how much you open up because you're still full of liquid. That's... But is one system going to overrule the other system? I mean, it's. Usually there is what happens human in data, no, but I have in my presentation, I'm going to go through like at least a few sta stages where we ha we're talking about how one system kind of can rule up to a certain point, but then another system overrules this one because you have to stay alive. Art, yeah. <clears throat> you couldn't carry it over there? Hi, Art, Art Slutsky. I'm over here, Jennifer. Sorry. From Toronto. Checking out the Polish guys who just walked in. Uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, NAVA and the herring broyer, think about the situations where uh, when you lose the herring broyer, what are the implications for NAVA? So take a patient with a lung transplant who no longer has a vagus. What are, what are the implications in terms of using NAVA? Is it, are there any problems because now you don't have that intrinsic uh, stopping of inspiration? Right, so in the lab we've done experiments where we've done a certain intervention before the vagotomy and then we've cut the vagus nerves and done it after vagotomy. And interestingly enough, yes, they breathe deeper and they breathe slower, but you still get some degree of response when you increase NAVA level. You still see the plateau, but at a much higher uh, tidal volume. Um, I think the thing is in patients, because there are a few publications on single lung transplant, I'm not sure about double, but you can always apply an upper pressure limit as well for safety um, and use the diaphragm activity for monitoring purposes. I think the, the, for the vagotomized situation, I think the biggest problem is the, the, uh, the actual deflation reflex because you have no conception of how to keep your lungs recruited. The, the over-recruitment is if CO2 goes up, tidal volumes might be violently high. But the standard, the common breathing is that you have to set your PEEP right. It's not so much the NAVA level that is the point, it's more the PEEP, because you lose your sense of recruitment completely when you have agotomized. <laughs>